The new DMZ map Koshai Complex comes with a new weapon case. And in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to get the weapon case. It is a lot more complex to get than any other DMZ map today. If you find the video useful, let me know by dropping a thumbs up and subscribing for more DMZ videos. The first step is to actually get into the complex. And to do that, you need to go into our Mazra and go to one of four different entrances. Three of these entrances will be marked on the overall map with a question mark, but one of them will be unmarked and will definitely be the quietest entrance that you'll want to use. So the first entrance you can use is going to be under our Mazra city in the car park. We'll be going underground to the car park, opening the doors and then going underground to this wall where you'll see there'll be the entrance there to the complex. Another location is in the Rohan oil access tunnels where there's going to be quite a few AI to take out, but it's going to be a wall on the right. You're prone to crawl in and then there'll be the opening that will lead you to the complex. Third location is between our Mazra city and Tarak village under this bridge. And the secret fourth and quiet location is in the oasis in the top northwest part of the map. I highly recommend this as the entrance to take. If you follow the path that I'm doing here in the oasis, it will lead you straight to the area where you will find the entrance to the complex. Now, the way it works is that you go up to these bunker doors and interact with it and there'll be a timer. Once it ends, whoever from the squad is in that airlock will be transported to the new map. Now, depending on what entrance you use to get into the complex is going to give you a different spawn with a different puzzle that you'll need to complete to get out of the area you spawn in and to get into the next section of the map. Map. I'll quickly break down all four puzzles from all four entrances, but you can use the timestamps to skip to the one that you need. Firstly, if you took the Rohan oil entrance, you'll spawn into an area called External Ops. Take out a bunch of AI and make your way across the signposted areas till you get to this room. That will lead you to this door with another bunker door. And on the right on the wall, it will say that something is missing here. And you're going to need to find a car battery and jumper cables in this area. You'll we'll always spawn somewhere, so be sure to loot absolutely every part of this area to to find both items, place them on the wall, and then you'll be able to press this button that will allow you to enter the chemical plant. If you entered through the Almazra City car park, you will also have the same puzzle where you'll need to find a jumper cable and a car battery, and you'll be in an area called information extraction. There will also be quite a few AI as you make your way around, but again, you want to be looking for a jumper cable and a battery. You'll need to use them in this room here, where on the wall you place them again, just like you did for the last one, and then go ahead and press the button just to the left to open the bunker door. If you entered through the Oasis entrance that I recommend, you'll be in the Defense Research Division and you'll have a bunker door gas puzzle. In total, there'll be three different numbered doors that you need to open. As you can see here, we're opening into three and you're in a room with a bunch of different desks and in front of you will be a room with four open bunker doors. There's going to be a button on one of these desks that will have the prompt to close bunker door on it and you'll want to just press that and that will close all of the bunker doors in that big open room, which will stop the gas from flowing into that room. You'll also hear a sound effect play that will allow that far door that's in the bunker door room to be open, allowing you to go into the next section where you'll see the same puzzle, but it will have O2 written on the doors instead. For room two, you'll need to press the button again, but there's a chance that there will still be one bunker door open that you'll need to manually close by going up to the valve next to it and turning it in order to close the door. Once all the doors are shut, you'll hear that same noise and that will let you go into room three. For room three, you're going to press the button, but there's also going to be a sentry gun as well as AI that will run at you with explosives. And once you've pressed the button and all the bunker doors are shut, there will still be one or two that you'll need to close manually. So be sure to do that and be sure to pick up the durable gas masks that the AI drop. The radiation blocker so you have more than enough time to go and close these bunker doors manually. But once you've done all three and the doors are open for you to go, you'll be going for a hallway and it will lead you straight to the bunker door where you can just press press the button to go into the power plant. If you took the entrance under the bridge at Tarek Village, you will have a swimming puzzle in which all you need to do is keep swimming along through these rooms and you'll find these red arrows on the wall that will lead you in the direction of where you need to go. Most of these rooms allow you to swim to the ceiling to get some extra air, but when you're going through to the next part of the rooms, you won't be able to do that. You'll then be in the room where there'll be a load of AI and traps that you need to get to the other end. And then you'll go back down into another part of water and keep swimming along following the red arrows. Eventually, it will lead you to this doorway that will lead you to the hallway where you have the bunker door. Also, I've needed to pick up night vision goggles along the way because this next part is in pitch black. It's also where you'll come across other real players for the first time, so just be wary. But you, what you want to do is make your way to the middle of this area where there'll be this square hut inside with lights on and to the side of it, there's going to be a ton of different sort of grates that you can walk through. You're going to have a key line called the factory admin key. You absolutely need this to progress to the next part of the map for the weapon case. So it's so important that you are the first team to get this because you're going to need this to get to the next part of the map. Now you then want to run around the chemical plant until you see this sign here for A1 or A2 is in this west direction and with that factory admin key 
You're going to use it here on this door, which will allow you to insert the key and will move us into the next part of the map where there's going to be a sentry gun waiting for you down the hallway. So be sure to take that out. But once you get past there, you'll now be in a new area of the map called Factory Admin, which is one of two sides to the final part of this map. For the weapon case, you need to make your way down into this section in the middle of the Factory Admin, which is called the Factory Wing, which is a high threat area. There's going to be some pretty tough AI that are going to be spawning down here, but you want to make your way from one side to the other. And once you get up these stairs and open this blue door, you'll now be in the other complete section of Factory Admin, which is again called Factory Wing. And once you enter this side of the map and get to the middle of the map, this is where you're going to have the first boss spawn in, which is the Rhinoceros. And it stood here in the middle of the map. It has a riot shield on its back and it has a ridiculous amount of health. Even with a six man team, we were spraying him for a very, very long time. So the biggest tip I can give you in the world is to run the KV broadside with Dragon's Breath rounds. Because if you do that, just look at how quickly we take him out in a three man run. This, he was dead within seconds. And when you kill him, it doesn't really drop anything of value. He drops a Desert Eagle as well as a Note. But by killing him, unlocks a door in the back of Factory Wing that was previously shut that allows you to go upstairs and can take on the second boss, which is called the Sniper. Now, all around this area, there are a bunch of traps. There's laser traps and there's proximity traps. So what you need to do is be very aware of the lasers and anything that may be related to a trap nearby because you want to crawl or prone to take them out whilst making your way towards the sniper. The sniper is a little bit of a bullet sponge if you're not using the KV broadside. As you maneuver your way around this top area where the sniper is, he's going to be constantly moving around to the left and there are a bunch more traps. So you need to be extremely careful. Don't rush this or you will go down. But the sniper is someone that makes shots at you from a distance and then sort of runs away to the left. So you just want to keep making your way left around this upstairs area until you've taken them out. But when you do kill the sniper, he drops a Victus XMR as well as a very important key called the Secure Room Key. Once you pick it up, the game will mark on the map this locked area that you can now unlock with that key. So make your way over to it and unlock the room and you'll find a bunch of rare crates. And on this little table here will be the brand new weapons case. The moment you pick up that weapons case, the whole rest of the map will be able to track exactly where you are, just like as if it was in Almazra. So just be aware of that. Similarly to Building 21, it's also really difficult to know if there are enemy teams sneaking around, so just be very careful, especially once you get the weapon case. Now, there are exfil points marked on the map that you can go and use to exfil. However, if you want a very secure way to exfil, that's by using what's called a layer two exit door. And you can find the key cards for this in random loot around the map. You can buy it from the shopkeeper for $50,000 or you can use a skeleton key. But what essentially it does is it unlocks a private exfil area, which isn't marked for other players. You will have a ton of AI in your way whilst you make your way to it. There are quite a few of these dotted around the map. There's going to be a few laser puzzles that are integrated into these as well as you make your way to that exfil icon but once you're near it it will just be a long hallway where at the end you'll have an exfil elevator that you can call and this is a lot more secure to exfil than normal because there is very little chance of there being other players here before you there you go you got the weapon case and you've exfil so let's show you all the rewards that you get there are six in total and they aren't that impressive but the final one locks a blueprint called the la bx 330 which is a blueprint for the LAB 330. Let me know what you think of this reward down below. But like I mentioned, a lot more complex to get this weapon case than any other DMZ map before. If you found this guide useful, if you did, hit a like, subscribe, and check out this DMZ video on your screen right now.